Last week we're talking about the difference between the ultimate holiness of God and the total difference between our lives and, and, and some of the issues that come out of that. The, the more we appreciate God's holiness, the more uh, we see the, the defects, if you will, in our own lives in reflection of that. But despite that, we recognize that God loves us and, and he's there for us. He wants to be there for us. Uh, in Exodus 15:1, we hear we get Moses singing or uh, the song that Israel sang. And most of the people of Israel sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. He has thrown both, both horse and rider into the sea. In Exodus 20, we read how God delivered his own people by blood. He took them out of Egypt. He saved them out of the bondage. He saved them with a view for delivering them. And that's a picture in 15, 1 to 11. Deliverance. And that's really what salvation means, to be delivered from something. Uh, John 3, 16, the famous passage, it says... God so loved, his own, loved his, the, the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Those who believe in him should not perish. Uh, he was rescuing us from perishing, from being separated from God from all eternity. So deliverance uh, is involved in, in uh, recognizing a genuine problem. They were being delivered from Egypt, and remember that God, they got the Red Sea and they couldn't cross it. The Egyptian shoulder, shoulder, soldiers, 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 were behind them and they cried upon God and uh, you got the, you just see in front of you and the Egyptian soldiers behind you stand and see today uh, Moses said the salvation of God and, and I believe you know in a situation like that all they would be doing is panicking absolutely panicking because they know what Egyptians are going to do to them uh, and they don't see a way out uh, and uh, and then Moses stands up uh, and he shows them the way out Waters opened, they went through, and when they got to the other side of the Red Sea, the waters closed again, and the horse and riders of the armies of Egypt were drowned. So not only did God provide a way of escape, but he uh, shut off, if you like, put a door between them and, and the, the, uh, that which they were escaping from. And, and sometimes in our lives, that, that's really something we need to be conscious of. Because uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, um, that's the implication that, that God will be there for us to provide a way of escape. The sad thing is that we only see the water and the, and the enemy. We don't see always see with God the opportunities that God has got uh, before us. And so therefore we just, uh, there's so much of panic about something, we don't take the way of escape because we just don't see it. Um, and that's a, a, a something we need to be conscious of. Uh, Moses said, the other side of the great river shouts and sings praise unto God. The whole people join together. And one of the expressions of the stanzas of the great song is who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? You know, it, it is difficult for us uh, in our cocoon in our society when we don't really see God in action in a real, um, tangible, physical way. You know, God doesn't do miracles for me. When I go to the fridge looking for my apple pie and it's not in there, you know, God doesn't come down and say, ta da there you go, and then, you know, it'd make a huge difference. If he did, what a God, would I, would I praise him more? I would have, every time he went to the fridge, there was something in it, can't be bad. Uh, <laughs> minor miracle, Frank, minor miracle. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was saving me from perishing, go up the pot. Um, and, and, you know, it's, it's something, if, if, if only God, a lot of people say to us, you know, you know it's all right for you guys to believe. If I saw something happen now, if I saw Jesus, why didn't Jesus come back and show us all the, you know. Well, it's sad, isn't it? He did it once and for all. He, he, he was crucified once for all. He was resurrected once for all time. Uh, it's sad that every generation comes up with the same old thing. Well, well I can't see him. I, I, he's not, he hasn't been raised in my lifetime. Uh, and yet the evidence is there, you know, we just don't want, we want the physical, we want something more tangible uh, to prove for us. You know, you show me, you show me. Mm. And it's sad, isn't it, really? We're, a, we're, a, we're an unbelieving people, even when the evidence is put before us, we're an unbelieving people. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you, if Jesus came back every time that somebody said that, it would scare them to death, wouldn't it? <laughs> 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 oh, I, mean, yeah. I just wondered myself, how would you feel if, uh, if he did? Uh, no, every time you go into the fence, 
get a fine fucking down into the it's gone. You didn't get one today. That's good for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, 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 no. Anyway, miracles to, you know, <laughs> to do the, what we want to do, not what we need. <laughs> and that's, that's a, I suppose that's true, isn't it? Yeah. The kind of miracles we want, you know, the kind of, it, it, we want ra- uh, rather than need. Uh, and, and God supplies the need. the same thing kept happening over and over again. Every the miraculous element would disappear. Yeah. Well, what about the sun rising? That's right. It's not right. Yeah. Not right. What yeah. About there are seasons coming. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, that's nature. Yeah. Isn't that right? We're used to that. Yeah. I was just admiring my, my snowdrops. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they, I don't know what your snowdrops, my snow, they've lasted um, ages. Mm-hmm. And, and there's no snow, can't be bad, you know. Yeah. But quite often when you see when the snow's there, you don't see them because uh, they're immersed in the snow. Uh, where's my snowdrops gone? Oh, they're covered by snow. Uh, mm-hmm. But now you can see them, you know, oh, oh, snowdrops, oh, very nice. Um, but really, we, we don't take the time to notice the blessings that God gives us all the time. And, and they're all free. That's even a bonus, isn't it, eh? We're looking, we're looking for the stuff we've got to pay for. If I don't pay for it, it's not, it's not, it's not going to do me any good. Uh, and it's all free. Mm-hmm. And matter of fact, when I go out of the car tonight, I looked up and I thought, goodness, God's lower the ceiling. Do you see the stars tonight? Yeah. They're really, they're really bright, aren't they? Can you remember Frankie, um, Gloria Franklin's uh, apple pie? That was nice, wasn't it? I Full can of apple. always remember it was in <laughs> Gloria, Gloria and Frankie's one. It looks apple pie. Oh, it's factory. Factory apple pie. I can never forget <laughs> Gloria's <laughs> apple pie. Yes. Oh. It's, it's Frankie, uh, Frank, next time you, you uh, Skype uh, Frankie, you'll have to tell him, get Gloria to send an apple pie over for Roger. And I'll share it. I, I can uh, never forget that. I'll give her the white address if I, if I do it too. Is <laughs> <laughs> someone not there? Yeah. Yes, it's your address. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh yeah. Goodness yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 gracious, we've got a miracle, we'll find over it. Yeah. 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 You're a devious like that. You so who, who is like unto thee, O God? Who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness? That's a wonderful expression, glorious in holiness. Isn't that amazing, really? Doing wonders. Yeah, it just, it, it just ama- the impossible happened before their eyes, and, and just full of awe, full of praise. Uh, who is like thee? You're glorious in holiness. That's a great. Mm-hmm. How many days do we, how many times in our life do we ever think about God in those terms? I think my memory says, I think my memory tells me it's glorious in holiness, doing wonders. Doing wonders? Yeah. Okay. The, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. It, 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 if you, if you look, look, look above the proper verse, yeah. There it is. Fearful and praises, doing wonders. That's yeah. Right, yeah. I'm totally amazed. That's the kind of God we, we worship. But we, we lose sight of that, don't we? We lose sight of the glory of our salvation. That's a, that's a, uh, of all the miracles that God could have done by allowing His Son to die for us, He's, he's opened up the opportunity for us to live forever with Him. So that's, that's got to be good news. Mm-hmm. That's got to be amazing. Uh, and, and yet we, we, we take it for granted, you know. In the Westminster Shorter Catechism, the question asked, what is the holiness of God? And the answer was given back, the holiness of God is his essential property. In other words, it belongs to him and him and only to him. That's in, the, in one of the one of these West, Westminster Catechism. Uh, would you, would you, if you're in the Church of England, you can memorize all that. Yeah, that's right. uh, his essential property simply means it not only is something that he has, yeah. it is something that he is. It's that which is part of his being. To holiness is part of his being. His very nature is essential property. The Westminster Catechism continues, Frank's quoting in his head there, whereby he is infinitely pure. He's not just pure, he is infinitely pure. And then he goes on, he loves and delights in his own purity. It, it really, it, it is it's so, uh, such an aspect of his being that it makes him feel good about it. Weird, anyway. Um, who of us can say we delight in our own purity before God? Oh, oh, oh dear, oh dear. All oh, in a very, 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 very seldom good day can we ever say, you know, boy, I did well today. I overcome that, 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 and that, and I'm feeling good about myself. 
Uh, not too many days left, right? okay. uh, He loves his own purity and holiness. He goes on, in all the resemblances of it which any of his creatures have, he, so he loves holiness within himself. And if he sees it in another creature, in other words, if his holiness is seen in another one that he has made, that's us, he rejoices in it also. He has great delight, he loves holiness in anyone. And then they conclude, he is perfectly free from all impurity, and he hates it wherever he sees it. So the contrast. Uh, you can see if we're having a good day, God's up there and saying, you see that to one of the angels, you know, digging one of the angels in the, in the ribs and saying, you see it, boy, you know, that's, that's my boy. That's purity. That's holiness. Uh, and he delights when he sees us actually getting it right for a change. Mm. <laughs> Probably you could put it that way. <laughs> That's more consistent, isn't it? But, but God's happy for us. In the same way when, when you see a two-year-old child trying to do something, maybe for the first time or the tenth time, and, and he's actually able to do it, and the, and the parents are going, That's my boy! Look at that! You know, It's the same type of thing. The pleasure that God gets out of us being holy and pure and righteous before him. Uh, it, it's, you know, uh, you can always say, well, I don't need to give him um, my righteousness today, because look at that. He's making it on his own. Almost. Uh, not quite. Okay, that's a, that's a bit uh, scrapped up. It. Okay. <laughs> what a picture of God, and yet when it, it ends up, um, a, he also hates when he sees sin. He hates when he sees the impact of the things that we get wrong, because he knows the mess that it makes of our life. And, and the guilt that we feel and the, 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 the beating up ourselves that we do uh, uh, because when we get it wrong. And that's a picture, a dreadful picture of God in his dreadfulness and his glory. And that's what Moses is saying. He is glorious, glorious in his holiness. It's not just something to be um, feared. It is something to bring praise to give him glory. You know, if we could see God in all his glory, we would just be awestruck. Uh, and, and, and just say, wow, that's about the best, well, best we can probably come up with at the time. Wow, you know. And, and it's sad, really, because we get so used to God and talking about God and thinking about God uh, that, that it becomes, we lose the awesomeness. We lose, you lose the specialness. Uh, and we lose that sense of the awe that, of who God is. And there's an old Puritan called Thomas Watson, he said, holiness is the most sparkling jewel of God's crown. Holiness is the most sparkling jewel of God's crown. <clears throat> it is the name by which God is known. It's not just an attribute of God, but God's holiness is his very name. It's what he's called. If you like, it defines him. Indeed, the, the psalmist says, holy and reverend is your name. His name is the only name that's holy and reverend. Well, that's actually... That's the only, Psalm 119 verse 9 is the only time you find the word reverend in the Bible. Despite what you hear about in, the, in the, some of the religious groups around you. And not only have you got the, the right, ah, this is the reverend. Uh, this is the very reverend. <laughs> He's most even reverend. more reverend he is. And this most is reverend. most most reverend. Yeah. Most strong. Yeah. And, and even God's not most reverend. Isn't that amazing? They're claiming for themselves something that is an attribute of God. That's absolutely Anyway, they'll have to deal with that when they see him. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> holy and reverend is your name. Uh, he's called in Job and right through the Old Testament, the Holy One. The Holy One. In Isaiah 6, the seraphim didn't cry. Didn't they, didn't they cry? No, didn't cry. Didn't they cry? Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Awesomeness in his presence. Specialness, uniqueness, powerfulness, awesomeness, whatever kind of word you like. Uh, it's, a, it's an impact of the God we worship is a holy God, a, a pure God, an awesome God, and a special, unique uh, God that we worship. Similar picture found in Revelation 4, verse 8. The holy beings exclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. The unchangeableness in the nature of God. Uh, we can something we can trust in. So what is the holiness of God? It is that characteristic of his being which takes pleasure 
in everything that is pure and holy and hates everything which is morally evil. Just as God is unlimited in other ways, so he is unlimited in his goodness. Since there is nothing in his being which is evil, it is impossible for God to be impure, because that would be contrary or, or uh, uh, different to, to who he is. That would not be who he is. <clears throat> James declares, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempts he any man. It is his perfect holiness which makes it impossible for sin to tempt him. I thought a hand might come up there and ask a question, but I'll leave it again. It'll come up again. Uh, in the New Testament, each member of the Godhead is referred to as holy. Father and the, uh, Son and the Holy Spirit uh, are all referred to as being holiness. So holiness is a, an aspect of, of Godhood, of deity. Holy, 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 thrice holy is our God, and that holiness is what makes him glorious. It's his power, his, if it's his power, if it's his power, his omniscience, the fact that he is almighty that makes him mighty, his holiness is what makes him glorious. His holiness is what makes him resplendent. The eye can't look upon him in his purity and holiness. Interesting concepts. His holiness consists in the perfect love of righteousness. It's a hundred percent love of all that is holy. God loves good stuff, good things, getting things right, doing things right. Uh, and uh, it doesn't fall, fall far short of, of absolutely perfect. Indeed, within the word of God, the metaphors, the similes are given to describe that great holiness. It's perfect purity. It is white, perfect whiteness, perfect light, the most pure light in which there is no darkness at all. It is absolute, uncreated light. He delights in perfect righteousness. Okay? So, I think you're beginning to get the picture. God, God is special. If we can understand it. Yes. Well, the problem is the language. You, you, you're, you're struggling really to, to, you're describing the indescribable. That's right. That's, That's a problem. Right. You know, uh, the problem is that, in my life, the, the closest I can come to the idea of perfect light would be, you're familiar with these, when you, when you get an oxyacetylene torch and it first sparks up and, and it's, a, it's a very powerful uh, flame, but it's all, it, and you can't look at it, it, it just, it, the, the flame, you're familiar with that, aren't you? Yeah. The flame just is, it, you can't look in the center of it, it's just so powerfully bright. And you think, wow, you know. Uh, and that's, that's God. That's right, that's because of the sun. That's right. Probably, yeah. It's, uh, well, it, it, it's, it's even better than looking at it, because you can't really look at the sun either. No, can't. Really. Because you can't look at it, because it's just too bright. Yeah, that's right. Um, at least in, in, the, in this light I'm thinking of, you can actually, if you look at the light from the edge, you can just see the light mm. coming out in the center of the, of the of a white light that surrounds it. But right in the middle of the white light, there's this bright, just pinpoint of just mm. pure light. Uh, it's and like those colours. It, yeah, it, it's it's magic to see. Mm. Uh, it, it, you don't look at it too often, like. But it's, it's magic. But it's it's the way closest I can come to think about the concept of God being light, pure and holy. That's the very closest I, I think I think to think of. And it's just mind blowing, really. <coughs> uh, God is light, and Him there is no darkness. <coughs> he is holy God. He is inherently holy. That simply means he's holy by his very being, by his very nature. That's just what he is. He is holy. Uh, we call him Almighty God, but really the most common way of talking about God is Holy God, our Holy God. Uh, it's a, a positive aspect and a negative. He is holy, and the problem with that is uh, darkness or evil is the total opposite of what he stands for. And uh, that's the biggest problem we have. <clears throat> the old prophet Habakkuk said, He is of purer eyes than to behold evil mm -hmm. and cannot look upon iniquity. God struggles when he sees the darkness of sin in our lives. Because he, it not just, it's not really just the sin, it's the consequences that he sees the mess of things. Uh, you know, I, I remember, uh, stupid illustration, I remember I was the other <laughs> We hired somebody to build a wall, and uh, it, it was a bricklayer, a, 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 an Irishman, 
Uh, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll build that for you. <laughs> that was about a five foot wall, and, and we went off and came back about a, a week later to inspect it. It was like a dog's breakfast, really. It was, oh, it was, a, it was a straight bit. <laughs> Now, if you're a if you're a if you're a perfectionist, and you see something like that, you just you you, you know you back the hair whatever it just it just uh, uh, you know puts you off. Uh, we we've got a new a new fence put outside our, our garden. Uh, keep it in the refract. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Susan was sitting standing in the kitchen, and it was cheesing her off. It really was making her angry. Goodness, I, you know, look at the fence. See, it's not level. It's not level, she says. And I said, this level. She says, no, it's not. Look at it. It's, it's not level. Well, you know where we live. We're on a slope. The garden's on a slope. We've got about four slopes going on in front. Of front. And of course, this, this fence is level. But of course, against the background of everything else, she said, I'm sure it's not level. I said, so I had to, I had to borrow a, a Terry's uh, spirit level. Uh, and because the guy was come up and back to finish it off, so she was got, she was going to tear, stripped off everybody, and it's that level. So she she took a, a spirit level out and she's, oh, oh, it's level. <laughs> Isn't that funny? But but because because she, she you know some people uh, don't like pictures that hang just slightly off. Mm -hmm. They don't like things that do you know, mm -hmm. and it really annoys them. Well, how much more is going to annoy God when He sees the mess that sin makes in our lives? You know, if you're really a good craftsman, I mean, Bern, you must see it all the time. Being, being a, 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 which one's the best? Joiner? Joiner. Yeah. If you see a joiner and he sees a job a, a carpenter has done, which is more like my kind of work, um, you know, it must, it must drive him berserk. Oh, look, why did he even bother? <laughs> or, or the reaction, tear it down and rebuild it. You can say, if you think that's bad, say the one that did earlier. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to explain the difference between a joiner and a carpenter to us. A joiner is a bench man, mostly working in the joiner's shop, oh, yeah. building furniture, building the things that the carpenter will go and put on a building site. Oh, I see it. Oh. You it's, a, it's a higher standard. The roof. It, 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 Better qualified than the carpenter. Yes, he, he, he does start everything to a higher standard. Uh, just like on a building site, you talk about uh, jobbing carpenters, yeah. and these are the guys who put up all the kind of rough work. Oh, yeah. uh, and if you go in, you think, oh, there's a big gap there, and this, that, and then you think, what is this? Yeah. But then a, a, a joiner comes along, uh, and when like, he's finished, you don't see all the mess that the carpenters make because oh. it's finished off properly. And that's like, you know, God must, sometimes when you meet people who have got that kind of high standard, like my wife, uh, she gets really annoyed <laughs> when she sees things that are just not quite right. And I don't know how she's looked at me so long, but anyway, uh, <laughs> reality is, you know, it's, it's annoying. You just can't, and I said, well, it's all right. And she said, it's not all right. You know, God, how's God going to feel when he sees us? Well, he does. He sees us. Well, and he remembers our frame. That's the and beauty of it. He remembers that we're dust. <laughs> he he must, knows our frame. He must say that to himself that every dust. day of the week. <laughs> They're only dust. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've that, done my best with them. The, when the prodigal looked at the son, what did he see? Yeah, the son. Uh, yeah. But he loved him just the same. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, that, and, that, and that is the real key. That's it's the yes, essence. Yeah. Because, because obviously in this kind of study we're talking about the 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 ideal God uh, the, God, the, the reality of the ideal concept of God right. uh, as against the backdrop of the reality of sometimes the mess we get ourselves into. But the beauty of it is that God has found a way of looking at us mm -hmm. and seeing beauty in our life. That's that's the amazing thing. That is truly the amazing thing. God is in love with us. And he's looking at us through rose tinted cross spectral spectacles, resurrection spectacles, and he sees something beautiful in us. You know the average the average parent as a, as a, as a child, and, and I see this all the time. You see, you see a little baby not long born, and the mother says, "Look at that! Isn't that beautiful?" And you look and think, "Goodness, well, it's pruned, it's like, you know, mottled, and that's beautiful." Yeah, you you should get your eyes tested. But in the eyes of the parent. That is beautiful, yeah. uh, and I must admit, you know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not one for babies' faces. 
seeing beauty in babies' faces, all right? But I'll tell you, when I look at the fingernails <coughs> and the hands, yeah. to me, that's beautiful. Yeah. That is totally amazing, yeah. you know? And God looks, God looks at us, and he sees us, despite all our feelings, he says, that is totally amazing. That's the wonder of the gospel, the amazement of the God that we worship. Despite his holiness, his purity, his awesomeness and his power, he wants to have a relationship with us. He wants to share in our lives. And that's, that's just mind-blowing. Absolutely phenomenal. Mm. <clears throat> Moses in Exodus speaks to the burning bush. The ground becomes holy ground because God has spoken out of this bush. The same book, the articles that are formed for the temple worship and the tabernacle, they're denoted, denoted as holy things. Why? Because they're associated with God and the worship of God, set apart for His service. Uh, the day in Exodus was set aside, the seventh day, the Sabbath day, a day of rest is described as His holy day. And the place where He is to be worshipped later on in the temple is God's holy house. That which is associated. Whatever God touches, he beautifies. He makes holy. He makes special. Set apart for his service. That's, there's some power in there that we, we just don't often come to terms with. The outfit that the high priest would adorn themselves was, was a holy. And the crown he went to wear was entitled a holy crown. And across it was emblazoned in these great words, holiness to the Lord set apart for his service. The Ark of the Covenant represented God's holy presence with his people. It was the holy Ark of God. And the hill of Zion, where Jerusalem ultimately was, was God's holy hill. The city of Jerusalem was God's holy city. There was nothing special in the city. There was nothing special in the temple. There was nothing special in the artifacts and, the, and all the things were used there. But they were made special. They were now special because they were related in a relationship with God. We are the temple of God now. We are God's holy nation. God's chosen race. Heaven itself, the place where God dwells, is his holy habitation. And all those things that aren't God, they have only got to come near to God to be made holy by God. His presence. That's an amazing thing. Um, there's people that we've met in our lifetimes that have touched our lives, and no matter how we think about those people, including the apple pie, they've made a difference in our life. They've touched us and made us better people because of it. That's, that's the real purity, the real holiness in God. He's made a difference in our lives. We need to see and understand God as a holy God. Inherently holy, part of his nature. It's not something about him that makes him holy, but he is a being that's holy in himself. He's made of holiness. Just as the sun shines through a window, he's made up of light. God is made up of holiness. His word, the expression of his thought, and we could say that his heart's desire that is expressed audibly and linguistically, i.e., in speech, within the Bible that we have before us, we call it a holy Bible. And it's right to call it the Holy Bible. In fact, it said of, it, of that, like silver, it is refined seven times. And seven is the number of perfection. Perfectly holy. So the Holy Bible it contains the holy words of God that helps to make us holy. It challenges us to be holy, to be like Him. His movements are holy. His decisions are, and choices He makes are absolutely holy and pure. The psalmist said in Psalm 145, the Lord is holy in all of his works. God cannot do anything that is unholy or that falls short from something that is absolutely and perfectly holy. When he made creation around us before Adam fell in sin, he said it was good. Not just good, he said it was very good. 
because God can't make anything that isn't very good. And so, uh, that's just a part of his being. It means all holiness begins with God. He, he, he began holiness, and any holiness in the <coughs> universe follows his pattern. It's not a new holiness. It reflects his holiness, because he is the originator of all holiness. The sum of all moral excellence is found in the universe, comes from God, and God alone. <coughs> All good gifts come down from the Father of lights, from glory, all holiness come from him. And if such holiness, even in this universe of sin and wickedness and evil, is unsullied from any of it. In him is light, God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. He's the author of holiness, and means he causes it in others. Not only did he begin it, it's almost as, as if it ever happens in our life, or your life and my life, or anybody's life, it's because God has started and challenged us to be holy. He made the angels holy, and they cry, holy, 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 because they come into the presence of the God in their holiness. <coughs> their holiness, angels' holiness, is not their own. <clears throat> they could lose it, and that's why when fall came, uh, Lucifer lost it. He was kicked out of heaven, and a whole band of angels lost it with him. And they can lose that holiness because no longer is God their own. So just a, not just the quality of God, it's the essence of God. There's no quality of human being to, to be holy. It's because we are reflecting the holiness of God. And even the highest self in heaven, the greatest creature that God ever, ever created, his holiness comes from and through God. Okay, any questions? <clears throat> that purity and light and holiness. God is. Okay, we'll hold it there. And uh, yeah, great, magic. <laughs>